to a video on the sum and difference identities for sine, the goal of the video is to use the sum and difference identities to determine function values. So the sine of a sum or difference are equal to the following. The sine of the quantity a plus b is equal to sine a times cosine b plus cosine a times sine b. And if we have a difference, or the sine of the quantity a minus b, it's equal to sine a times cosine b minus cosine a times sine b. Now we can combine these two identities into a single identity if we write it like this. Notice we have a plus or minus sign here and a plus or minus sign here. So if we have a sum of two angles, we have a sum of these products. If we have a difference of two angles, we have the difference of these two products. Now I did include a slide that shows the proof of the sign sum identity. We don't have time to go through all of this now, but if you read through this, it's pretty straightforward and it will verify the validity of the sum and difference identity for sine. Let's go ahead and take a look at some problems. We want to determine the sine of a minus b given the sine a equals four-fifths in the second quadrant and cosine b equals negative five-thirteenths in the third quadrant. Let's go ahead and sketch these angles in standard position. So for angle a, whose terminal side is in the second quadrant may look something like this. And so we'll call this reference angle A prime. Since the sine of this angle is equal to four fifths, we know the opposite side is equal to four, the hypotenuse is equal to five. This is a three, four, five right triangle, so this would be equal to negative three since we are in the second quadrant. Next, cosine B is equal to negative five thirteenths in the third quadrant. So this would be angle B in standard position. So if we draw our reference triangle, it might look something like this. So we'll call our reference angle B prime. And the cosine of this angle is equal to negative five thirteenths. And this is a five, twelve, thirteen right triangle. And so this would be negative twelve. So now let's go back up to our identity and we should be able to find all of these values now. We have the sine of angle A minus B equals sine A times cosine B. Well, sine A is given as four-fifths. Cosine B is also given as negative five-thirteenths. Since we're using a difference here, we'll have a subtraction sign here. Now the cosine of angle A, we can use this reference triangle here adjacent over hypotenuse, that's negative three-fifths. And for the sine of angle B, we'll use this reference triangle, opposite over hypotenuse, or negative twelve-thirteenths. Now again, notice we have a common denominator of five times thirteen, or sixty-five. Our first numerator is negative twenty, minus, this will be positive thirty-six, so the sine of A minus B will equal negative fifty-six sixty-fifths. And that's what we're looking for in this problem. Let's take a look at another example now. We want to determine the exact value of, of sine 150 degrees. 150 degrees is not one of those nice reference angles. But we can use a sum or difference of reference angles to obtain 105 degrees. 105 degrees is equal to 60 degrees plus 45 degrees, both of which are reference angles that we can use in this identity to determine the exact value of sine 105 degrees. So let's go ahead and set it up. So since the sine of 105 degrees equals the sine of 60 plus 45 degrees, our value for A will be sixty degrees and our value for B will be forty-five degrees. So this will equal the sine of A times the cosine of B plus cosine of A times the sine of B. And we'll use a unit circle to find these values. 
then find the products, then find the sum. So the sine of 60 degrees, remember sine is equal to y on the unit circle, square root of 3 over 2, times the cosine of 45 degrees, equal to the x-coordinate, square root of 2 over 2, plus cosine of 60, which is equal to 1 half, and the sine of 45, square root of 2 over 2. So what we found is the sine of 105 degrees is equal to the sum of these products. Notice our denominator is 4 in both cases. Here the numerator is the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. Okay, I think I have one more example. Now we have an angle that's in radians, so it might be helpful to convert this to degrees so that we can determine which reference angles to use. This equals negative 15 degrees. So what we can do is we can use 30 degrees minus 45 degrees, and that will give us the negative 15 degrees that we need. But let's be consistent and let's use radians. So 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6 radians, and 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4 radians. So we'll use this for angle A and this for angle B. Let's set it up. So we'll have the sine of pi over 6 minus pi over 4, which again will give us the negative pi over 12. So we'll have the sine of A, which is the sine of pi over 6, times the cosine of angle B, which is pi over 4, minus cosine of angle A, or cosine of pi over 6, times the sine of B, which is pi over 4. Using our unit circle, the sine of pi over 6 would be 1 half. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 would be square root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4, again, is square root 2 over 2. Okay, so now we have the value of sine negative pi over 12. Notice we have a common denominator of 4. This numerator would be the square root of 2 minus, this is the square root of 6. And we have the exact value of sine negative pi over 12. Okay, that's pretty much all we have time for. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.